He's if he's in Vindia, he's going to talk about uh, mem mem Memento? All right. Um, but with uh, so many moving parts, it's hard to just sort of read out all of the activity of your entire system. Um, so we need to be able to choose what we want to see, where and when, in what format. And often those choices change independently. So it, you don't just want one format, you might want several for different types of logs. So memento.jl is a logging library that attempts to solve this. It's hierarchical, pluggable, extensible, and configurable at runtime. And I'm going to expand on everything there. Um, it's fully tested on 0 0.6, 0 0.7 uh, with full test coverage. Mainly what memento does is it separates the concerns uh, of a logger into several pieces that are independently configurable. So you have uh, loggers, which are, um, which I'll go into all of these. You have loggers, handlers, records, formatters, and filters. Um, loggers accept messages or records uh, through the familiar info and warn and uh, log functions. And their job is to uh, decide whether to emit a log using filters, uh, log levels, and then uh, either pass off to the handlers or uh, decide whether or, or propagate it up 
to the parent logger, which decides whether or not to admit a log. Um, loggers are indexed by name. Uh, usually it's the module that you're in, but you can name a logger anything. Um, this is a typical module level usage for a logger. You have a, uh, grab your logger based on your module and info, debug, error, send messages to it. Um, now, I've talked about parent loggers and I said this is a hierarchical logging library. So what I mean by that is at the basic level, an application can log to the root logger or it can log to a specific logger which will by default propagate up to the root logger as well. Um, all loggers can have children which by default propagate up messages to their parents. This is useful for some modules and subsystems where you can turn on and off verbosity for different components of your application. In point seven uh, and 1.0, um, we can integrate Memento with the logging system and sort of intercept uh, those logs that are sent using the base logging uh, macros and get them rerouted through Memento. Uh, since the point seven logging macros record the module the log is from, uh, logs to the base, uh, the global logger, are opted into Memento's hierarchical framework by finding the logger that corresponds to the module they're logged from, and they can be filtered and handled by Memento just like all of other logs. So this is how you integrate Memento with the base logging system. It's one function call, memento.substitute, um, and then you see uh, now the logging macro for point seven sends messages through Memento with the module that it's in and, and REPL it's main. So you're just opting into the hierarchical framework that everything else in Memento handles. Filters are important. Um, these are predicates applied applied to records which decide whether or not to log something. They can be any part of a record and attached to loggers or handlers. And the default level filter on loggers, default level, level filter is responsible for log level management. So there's a filter saying if the log, uh, if the logger is set to info, don't log to bug messages. Now handlers, are what receives the record from the logger and sends them to some output destination. This is the key difference between uh, Julia's base logging standard lib and Memento is that these are con separate concerns. So any number of handlers can be attached to any logger and by default, the experience is there's one logger attached to the root, or one handler attached to the root logger that just outputs to the console. They can also uh, filter logs to only certain records, which the default handler does, but they don't have to. This is using one of our handlers that I've built, a CloudWatch log handler. So this, in addition to sending the output to the console, will send it to CloudWatch logs, which is an Amazon Web Services service that uh, allows you to uh, index logs and search them. Um, because I'm low on time, I'm gonna skip through a bit. Uh, records are what your logs are. You can make custom records with any fields. You could log custom messages based on the type of record. Um, formatters can be used to control how the, a certain type of record is handled by a certain uh, handler. Um, and I also have uh, some examples that I'd like to show quickly. Um, these are things you can't do with the logging standard lib. Um, most notably because a message can only be sent from one logger to, uh, only be sent to one logger and the logger has to be set either globally or task locally. You can have an override and that has to be done in the code. And these, I use one file. It just logs to module loggers and I'm never gonna change the code, but I'm gonna do three different things. 
One right here, I can set all logs to the console, which you see, as well as files. Um, there's a file roller, which handles um, uh, sort of limiting file sizes and creating more than one file. This is a commonly done thing on Unix systems. Um, so you can see we log to the console and then all those logs are identically uh, stored in the log folder here. Um, we can also take a module's debug info and say, we want this separately. Um, so by default, we aren't actually uh, showing all the debug messages to the console, because that would maybe overload you while watching your program. But here, we can log them to the file so you could look at them later. Um, you can see it's uh, retrying something. Um, it's taking a few uh, attempts to do something, and this is something you couldn't have seen uh, without those debug messages. And here, we're digging down, we're finding the exact place where those errors were happening, and uh, logging that specific information. So we're logging a little compact stack trace representation in our log file. Um, it won't scroll up, but um, this could be used to find out where the problem's happening without actually uh, changing the output that goes to the console. So that's it. Um, out of time, um, do we have time for a question? Okay. Anybody? Uh, have you thought about integration to uh, sort of other backends, uh, like uh, you know where do you store the logs uh, to sort of third-party backends for log storage? Is that something that there should be integration, or have you thought about it at um, all? So you're talking about a package to like maybe index or or like view the logs. Um, we haven't looked at that at all. Um, we mostly deal with uh, sort of managed platforms that already exist. So the CloudWatch logs we have reading into Sumo Logic, which is a log uh, indexing platform. Um, and it's fairly easy to build, it's pretty easy to build a handler for any sort of place you're gonna send logs to. Uh, do we have? Um, can the next speaker set up? And we have two more questions. Okay. So once you have hierarchical logging, how do you represent the configuration for all of those? Like I see how you set it just in code, but if I have a production application and I want to change like really fast, go back and forth between different configurations, how do I do that efficiently? Or is there a plan for that? So uh, the way we have that work is by uh, setting those things in code. You can set the level of a logger. You can set uh, um, sort of recursive levels to say, oh, I want this like entire part of the tree uh, to shut up or to like log to a specific file. All that's at, at runtime. So when you start your application, you can run those things. That's what we currently do. Um, there's no sort of separate configuration, um, but uh, because you can do it at runtime, you can do it at any time. Um, whereas the base logger, you have to set environment variables if you want to control debugging, which has advantages and disadvantages. Scott. Hi, um, I just have a very simple question. Um, are there any, is there any support right now for actually persistent storage, um, or do you have to roll, roll that yourself? I mean, where I've been before, we've always used like some form of central persistent, like uh, post, Postgres or something, to store the logs. We can then index and look at nice things. So that would be, uh, you'd have a handler that sends logs to that. Yeah. Um, uh, I showed up there the CloudWatch logs handler, so that's one, uh, one sort of thing. You could uh, pretty easily in like a, a couple lines write a handler that would send to a Postgres database or any sort of persistent. Okay, let's thank Eric one last time.